Hello, welcome to my Spider-Man room. And these are my tarantulas. I appreciate not everybody's cup of tea, which is where I got the name from. But I just thought I'd do a quick rundown of what I've got. Mostly uh, slings and juveniles. Um, in fact, it's all slings and juveniles. Mostly slings, few juveniles. Uh, so firstly, I've got the Chromatopelma cyanopubescence or Kynopubescence. I'm probably going to butcher some of these names. Uh, she is currently in the T-Rex skull, which is perfect, but she's done some beautiful webbing in there. Not loads, because I've not actually um, not had her forever, uh, not had her for too long, and she's almost immediately gone into the here. She's done loads of webbing inside, you just can't get a feel for it, for it from here, but it's beautiful off camera. Um, this is my uh, Carabina Versicolor sling, and she I only got yesterday. And she is absolutely gorgeous. I love that blue. Uh, I did have one, unfortunately. Um, I lost it just after a molt. Molted absolutely fine. Started um, hardening up, and then I just found found it dead on its back. And I was like, oh, well, that's sad. Um, but the, this time I've taken no chances and put a few extra cross ventilation holes in there just to make sure. <laughs> um, Harpactera pulchropes. Oh, it's just beautiful. You just can't see much from here um they've got their colors she's got a color already as a sling um so cirrocosmus elegans and cochiana brunipes i like i re i put them in these tiny little boxes that i got from a shop somewhere um i haven't seen them since i rehoused them basically they were so small um but I keep putting food in there and hoping they're scavenging when it's in there. Uh, there's not really a lot else I can do because they're not going to take anything alive. They're, they're that small at the moment. So hopefully one day I'll just see them trundle out from wherever they've been in slightly bigger, fresher clothes. Maybe a bit more confidence. Um, yeah, this is my Brachypelma Bome. She's absolutely beautiful. The colours on her are intense. Ah, she's gorgeous. This is my Therophosa Blondie. You absolutely will not see her at the moment because she is... Uh, you can just make her out down in the hide. Just enjoying life. Again, got her yesterday as well, so it's only been, uh, at this point, not even 24 hours since I put her in here. She's already had a little wander around, like moved some stuff around, decided to throw leaves in her water bowl, but beyond that, like, I'm not expecting her to be too settled just yet. The same with the Carabina Versicolor, uh, and the same with... Um, my Hattie Hattie, which we'll get to. Here is my Davis Pentalorus. Absolutely fat booty. So currently on a hunger strike, forced by me. Um, I genuinely think it would keep taking food. So it's not having anything at the moment. Um, I'm just gonna let it get to like a normal sort of size. It could also be that it's in pre-malt, but either way, yeah, it's not getting any food at the moment. Just keeping it watered and that is it. Um, Asama Pea Seminia. Unfortunately, it's got um, slightly iffy back legs at the moment. Um, it struggled to climb acrylic. Uh, when I did the rehousing in a bra plus container, it, it actually managed to um, get out of its little sling pot and run across the bra plus container, um, but it couldn't climb the plastic. However, when I put it in here, had no issues on the cork bark. So I'm hoping it can just molt through the back leg issue. Uh, I think it just happened in transit, so it turned up like that, but um, but the company I got them for, got it from has said absolutely unequivocally when I order another another tea from them, they'll just replace it. But fingers crossed, you know, she just gets through it with a malt. Um, it's like I said, it's not stopping her from doing anything else. She's climbing cork bark. I haven't seen her for a while. I think she's burrowed at the base of the tree. Um, but I've been putting food in there and I have noticed that every now and then if I put it on top, it'll work its way to the bottom. So fingers crossed she's taking it. And it's not just wing its way. Ah, my OBT, my Pteranoculus murinus. Um, it's the red colour form Usambara mountain variant. Can't see it at the moment. Um, it's literally in the hide. Uh, I have put cardboard around it because originally I was quite... I've only had her a week, uh, maybe a little bit longer, but originally I was quite selfish and thought, oh, I put the hide against the acrylic so I could see it and then realised, actually, that's just for me so i put cardboard around there so she's got somewhere dark to hide to and so far it's worked out perfectly because she is the most chill like i can literally open the enclosure and give her food and she'll just take the food she's just very no threat posing no nothing literally she'll just go either go straight to a hide or um or take the food with no issues whatsoever 
My Grandma Stola Pulchra has been burrowed since June. Um, yeah, 10th of June. So luckily he put his hide up against the glass so I can see him. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping for a molt at some point. Uh, I mean, aren't we all? But um, I know Grandma Stola's are notoriously slow growing. So could be like a year of him not eating and in pre molts So who knows? Uh, this is my Cerecopelma species Santa Catalina, or what were, will eventually be a bird eater, so like quite a big one. Um, I believe its common name is something like Latin or flame-legged um, Latin bird eater. But again, I'll, I'll be using scientific names for a lot of these, um, just because uh, I find a lot of confusion with the common names. Like the Brachypelmas in particular are a nightmare. Um, but this one is beautiful. And gets even more gorgeous as she gets older. She's one of those that just gets better and better coloured. Uh, I'm really struggling with pronouncing the first part of this. Cereopagus. Cereopagus. Um, species Hattie Hattie. I don't think I'll ever see her again. But she's in there. She's just at the back of the cork bark in a little hide. Um, you'll notice like some of these more moisture dependent ones. Like um, my Hattie Hattie. My Therophosa Blondie. And the Caribbean Verse colour. I put clay balls at the bottom so I can keep the substrate moist and humid and um, with the Hattie Hattie, um, with the Caribbean Verse colour I put extra cross ventilation in there and with the Hattie Hattie obviously it's it's one of those um, AliExpress enclosures <laughs> um, but it works perfectly and I've got my fossorials are all over here I'm going to a little trip then so I've got Calabracus fimbriatus. Um, she's been taking food down like a champ. However, speaking of taking food down like a champ, Hysterocratus gigas has literally dragged dubia roaches and and these are all slings. Like so, you're talking like two centimeters. So I am giving them small dubia roaches, but it's been dragging dubia roaches and mealworms down to its burrow, and then just spitting the boluses back out. It's been fantastic, uh, absolute amazing to to witness and and just fascinating uh ceratogorus darlingi both these two were freebies when i ordered from uh, creatures from the north so massive thank you for that um and a calabracus wahini wahini um and then i've got all my equipment is here <laughs> so that's just a big tub of cocoa fiber i mix it with a little bit of the spider life i've heard mixed reviews about the spider life so um, I don't use loads of it, but it's obviously still got like, um, it, again, I use it more for the, um, the moisture dependent ones. So like your, um, the Therophosa Blondie, the, um, Caribbean Versicolor and the, uh, Hattie Hattie have had a little bit of that mixed in just so it, cause it's got the charcoal and stuff. Like I break everything down and it's got all the goodies. I've also got a tub of vermiculite, um, as well. The, this is just a bag of of moss which I kind of leave a tiny little hole so that it doesn't just co like cause condensation within the bag. Sand because um, this is hopefully an enclosure that will be used for um, Monocentropus balfouri communal of slings. I I've ordered five five one to two centimeter slings and this should be perfect for them really because um, you're supposed to treat them as though they are kind of not quite treat them as one spider but just keep them in a smaller enclosure so they you know they live on top of each other basically and they don't get territorial um so that hopefully we'll use for that trusty red light torch Boop. Uh, for the inspections millworms millworm pupae with beetles on the ground uh dubia roaches red runners and just an endless stack of bra plastic pots and containers and cups that i've turned into uh, more containers and then I've got glue gun, soldering iron, my rehousing box. I tend to do everything inside that for the most part, um, just in case it gives them like a corner to run into if they decide to get out. But so far, I've only had one escapee, and that was the summer pair of minion. Bless it, it tried. And even then, I was doing that because I was dealing with slings. I did that inside one of the larger bra plus containers at the bottom there. Um, but yeah, so these these are my my tarantulas uh, in my Spider-Man room. Um, I've got a little. Heat it to keep everything at 25 degrees in here. And I have a um, fan slash humidifier if required, just to keep everything, all the air cycled through. Um, and yeah, so it's very much 
a uh, room where I just come and escape. Like my partner's uh, quite terrified of spiders, but she was the one that started this by buying me the uh, the Grammar Stella Pulchra. Um, and she she comes in here quite regularly now, so, like so it's helping her get over her fear. And we'll see where this goes. I don't know. Um, we'll see. <laughs>